You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. Who is God speaking to me? I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. Therefore, God's Word is being confirmed in my life with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah and amen. Turn your Bibles, please, to two places of Scripture. Number one, we'll look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and then we'll turn over and look at 1 John 4, 4 in a moment. 1 Peter chapter 2, first letter or epistle of Peter, chapter 2, and when you have it, say praise the Lord. And those of you who are still turning to it, we'll wait on you. But 1 Peter chapter 2, we'll look at verse 1 and 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Let's all read verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2. And we remember that last week we were talking about the preceding verses of Scripture in chapter 1 fall in line with chapter 2 because Peter was not writing in chapters and verse designations. Peter was just simply writing as the Holy Ghost was leading him. So in chapter 1 of 1 Peter, verse 23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 24, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now notice in verse 25, it says, but the word of the Lord endureth how long? It endureth forever. And verse 23 of that same chapter of 1 Peter, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. The word of the Lord, the word of God, it endureth forever. So you're born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Or we could say it this way. You're born again of the enduring word of God that never fadeth away. So you always have the nature and the life of God abiding in you, O born again believer, as long as you say, I want to stay in the family of God. So therefore we say it this way. <clears throat> Inwardly, you're being renewed day by day. Outwardly, your flesh is as grass. Now turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John, the fourth chapter, we said we'll look at that verse of Scripture. Because today I'm talking about the subject living inside out. Let the inside of you show on the outside. The word of God which abideth forever that's on the inside of you, needs to shine on the outside, allowing the inside, the part of you that's born again of the eternal word of God, you have eternal life abiding in you. Therefore, you can let the 
goodness of God on the inside shine on the outside. You can let the nature of God that's on the inside of you preeminate and allow and permeate the outside of you. So in 1 John chapter 4, let's look at verse 4. You are of God, little children. Ye is the old English word for you. You are of God, of little children. Everybody say, I'm of God because I'm a child of God. Now, John's writing to believers in Christ Jesus, and he said that you're the beloved of God. And he says, you are of God. That means you have come forth from God. You are born of God. You have the nature of God. The incorruptible seed of God abideth in you. And the eternal word of God is responsible for you being a new creation person. You therefore are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who's them that he's talking about? Them spirits, them the devil, them that are not in the family of God, that choose not to obey God. The Bible encourages us to be mindful that we are of God, And we've overcome them, the devil and his demons and cohorts, because greater is he that is where? That's in you than he that is in the world. So since the Lord has informed us that greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world, we must be willing to say, I am willing to grow up in the Lord and let him who's on the inside show greatly on the outside. I choose to walk in the power of the greater one who dwells within me. One minister said it this way, choose to be God inside minded. Now what do you mean by choosing to be God inside minded? That means you that are born of the spirit of God, you that have the nature of God, you that have the incorruptible seed of God's word that lives and abides forever on the inside of you, let him on, who's on the inside, let him show up big on the outside. Now, we used to sing a song, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. How about that? Can you all catch a hold of those words and sing that with me? Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. One more time. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Now, we also went from Jesus on the inside to singing the Father on the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. You see, because I have the greater one within, I choose to live my life by the ability, the power, and the authority of the greater one within. How many of y'all can agree with that? All right. Now, you're still there in 1 John chapter 4, aren't you? Look at 1 John chapter 3, the third chapter. The third chapter of 1 John. And we'll look at verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world, that's those who are outside of the family of God, those who are not born of the Spirit of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When are we? So some people are saying, well, I'll act like a child of God. I'll act like a Christian when I get into heaven. So that means I'm looking for the pie in the sky and the by and by. But see, the instruction of the scriptures lets us know that now are we the sons of God. That eternal life abideth in you now. 
that the greater one lives where? On the inside of you now, O Christian. And he, the greater one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the triune God, desires to be seen on the outside. So that means we have a responsibility to allow him who's on the inside to show greatly on the outside. Now, why does he encourage us in this information? Because if we allow ourselves to be more fleshly minded, we'll, we'll, as it were, we won't allow the spirit of God who's on the inside to show up greatly on the outside. And we want the one on the inside to show up greatly on the outside. Let him who's in you live greatly outwardly in you or on you. Verse 2, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now here he says, let's read verse 2 all together. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now the word appear gives the impression that something is present, but you just don't see it fully as you should. So I like when I have uh, art projects or books like that, and you can take water and you dip your paintbrush in water and you can paint over or take the water and put it on the page and all of the artwork that was in the page comes to the surface and becomes apparent. How many of you have ever seen that before? Little kids' arts and crafts books and so forth. Do you ever have one of those type of things? Well, well, putting water on the page doesn't actually make me the painter of the artwork that's there. I could try to claim responsibility for it and say, aren't I a good artist? But in reality, I'm not. I just what? I just put paint on what was already there, allowing that which was already there to be seen in a greater way. You see, we as believers in Christ Jesus, we didn't cause ourselves to be born again by God's word just by our own ability because we thought of it. No, God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. And Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is the firstborn from the dead. Jesus is the first new creation, born again man. And we all have our number after him. We who are born again, we are sharing the same nature that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has. Jesus was born from the dead. Now, some of you, what are you talking about? You're there in 1 John chapter 3, aren't you? Looking at verse 2, he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. The word appear means there's something that's present, but it's not visibly seen as it should be yet. What we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he will be. As he what? As he is. Now, what does is mean? Is, is it present tense, future tense, or past tense? Is is present tense. So it says that Jesus Christ is. He is who he is, but yet people don't see him as he actually is, and then he'll see us for who we really is. Do you understand that? So then what do people see when they look at us? In reality, what they see is our outward bodies. And our bodies are simply the temple of our spirit. So the real you on the inside is looking on the outside through these eyes. But the real you is on the inside. I like to call my body the earth suit. It's an earth suit. Now, since my body is the earth suit, then if the real me dwells on the inside of this body, 
then should I be only concerned about the flesh, the earth suit, or should I be focused more on the spirit man, which is inwardly? See, it'll do you good to be more inside-minded than outside. Why? Because Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, oh, what a change in my life. If I get my inside to be mature and grown up in the Lord, then my outside is going to act like who I really am on the inside. So it's necessary, as Peter was describing, he said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. What he was really saying is this, just like a baby wants his mother's milk and it will not accept anything other than what it wants, you ought to receive the word of God. Why? Because your hunger and thirst after the word of God will cause you to mature in the things of God. And when you mature in the things of God, the reality of who you are on the inside will begin to show up on the outside. So John writes, beloved, in verse 2 of 1 John chapter 3, now are we the sons of God. Not when you get to heaven, then you'll become a son of God. No, you're a son of God now, ladies, that includes you. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, because I'm aware of him on the inside, that means I'm going to be thinking about how to allow my inside, my real man, the inward man, I'm going to allow him to be what? the priority of all that I pursue in my life. I'm going to feed my spirit, and if I feed my spirit, then my outside man will be taken care of. If I walk in the word and allow the word to build my faith, then because I choose to walk by faith and not by sight, all of my natural needs will be met. Because all that I literally receive from God I'm going to have to receive it down in here first. And then it'll show up on the outside. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs, the 20th chapter. Proverbs, the 20th chapter, verse 27. Spiritually, I must be working on mature, being mature. I have to say, I've got to meet my spiritual needs first. And if my spiritual needs are met first, then my outward needs will be taken care of. Because if I'm spiritually mature, if I'm spiritually strong, if I'm spiritually at the place where I should be as a mature one in the Lord, then all the things that I have to deal with in life, they won't be a challenge for me. I'll deal with them in the context of my strength in the Lord. How many of you have ever seen uh, the old commercial where a person would be lying in the beach or on the beach and a bully would come and scoop the sand on them and then just take their girlfriend? I mean, you know, the, 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 the idea is don't be a weakling. Because if you're a weakling, somebody will just come scoop the sand on you, throw dust on you, and take what you consider to be very important and precious. Because a weakling can't get much accomplished. A weakling can be taken advantage of. A weakling gets things taken from them. A weakling can't retain what they consider to be important to them. And you don't want to be weak. You don't want to be spiritually weak. You want to be spiritually strong. You want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, looking at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, the spirit of man is the what? Is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Let's all read that out loud together. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. So 
The spirit of man is the candle. We would say in this day and time in which we live in, the spirit of man is the lamp or light bulb of the Lord. And he searches all the inward parts of the belly. Now, why would God search the inward parts of my belly? Because the belly region is where my spirit dwells. Got that? So when we hear the word heart in the Bible, the word heart is not talking about your blood pump. The word heart is talking about the center and core of your being, and the center and the core of your being is your spirit. So therefore, you want to focus on the spirit man and not be so much focused on the outward fleshly man. Because the outward fleshly man can be really, really strong. But if the inward man is weak, then you'll do things that weak people do. Even though you may be strong outwardly. Now, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So where's your spirit man located? Put your hand over your spirit man, as it were. Point to your spirit man. That's the real you down in that belly region there. Now turn over to John's gospel, chapter 7. The seventh chapter of the gospel of John. John chapter 7, verse 37. What we're establishing, living in the way in which the inside is on the outside, allowing the inside out, the inside to shine on the outside, you first of all have to be really, really clear that the real you is not your physical body. The real you is a spirit. And because the real you is a spirit, you have to be focused on spiritual things to be able to grow up spiritually, to mature and be strong spiritually, and to operate by faith is what pleases God. And if you're going to operate by faith, you're going to have to come to this conclusion that faith is a spiritual product coming from my spiritual man, which is my heart. Faith doesn't come from my flesh. My flesh was not made to believe. My flesh does not believe. You know, although people say, if I see it, I'll believe it. Why do you say if you'll see it, then you'll believe it? Because usually people say, if I touch it, if I touch something, if I touch it, then I can believe it. But according to the scripture, believing is a product and an ability of your spirit. It does not come from your flesh. Your flesh is fed by the information it receives from the five senses. What you taste, what you smell, what you hear, what you can feel. So your flesh gathers information from the five senses, and your five senses communicate it to your brain, which is also called your soul, and because your flesh is receiving information from the five senses, if something exists that your flesh can't pick up on by the five senses, then your flesh will deny what's there because it can't see what's there. How many of you understand what I just said? So something can be there, but it, your flesh can deny it because it doesn't have the five senses to register it. For example, if you understand that your flesh is fed by the five senses, but your spirit is fed from the hearing and receiving in your heart, then you can have the reality and the truth of God's word operating and causing you to make decisions from what you know in your heart that will govern your life above how you feel with your flesh. So your flesh may want something, but your spirit man says, no, I'm not doing it. And when you say from your heart, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk in a pleasing manner unto God. Your flesh may say, but I don't feel like it. 
But see, if you are only thinking about you being what a fleshly person and not a spiritual person, it'll cause you to walk, as we read in the beginning, you'll be in malice, you'll be envious, you'll be in strife, you'll be cursing, you'll be fornicating, you'll be doing those things of the flesh. Why? Because the flesh has appetites and desires that are contrary to your heart, your spirit, which is of the Spirit of God. See, in the Spirit of God, how many of you know that we're not born of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed of the Word of God, right? Well, the incorruptible means that God's not leading us to do anything that's contrary to his word. He'll never lead us to do anything that's contrary to his word. Then if I'm doing something that's contrary to his word, why am I doing it? Because you're listening to your flesh, not following after the spirit of God, which dwells on the inside of you. And you should be able to make a distinction between your flesh desires and your spirit, which wants to do the will of God. But the only way you're going to know the difference is by the word of God. You Are you with me? Okay, so now looking at John chapter 7, verse 37, he says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, there's that word belly again, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. So out of your belly is not talking about your stomach up here, that organ which is used to digest food. He's talking about down in here, your belly is where your spirit region is. And your spirit is going to have something take place when you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you'll start speaking in tongues. But it's not coming from up here. It's coming from down here. In your what region? Your belly region. And this is totally different than what the world says. The world says, if it feels good, do it. But the word of God says, Be focused on what's going on down in here. Because if your belly is led of the Spirit of God, you're going to have power and you're going to do the things that please God and you won't get into trouble. You'll live an abundant life by listening to your spirit that is alive unto God. So so what's the work for a Christian? The work for the Christian is to let him who's on the inside show up greatly on the outside. And if I allow the one who's on the inside to show up greatly on the outside, I will walk in power, I'll walk in strength, I'll walk like the Lord does because he lives on the inside of me. And because he lives on the inside of me, I can allow him to show up on the outside. And that way, when I really mature in the word, as I act on the word of God and and be more focused on the greater one living within, people will begin to say, you know, you act like somebody. You act like somebody. Who do you act like? You act like Jesus. You act like Jesus. I thought I recognized that conversation. I thought I recognized that compassion. I thought I recognized people getting healed when you lay hands on them in Jesus' name. You act just like Jesus. And that's the way all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are supposed to be identified. We're supposed to look like, talk like, act like, think like Jesus. The greater one living on the inside should be showing up on the outside. So now we see, since the greater one lives on the inside, and we're looking at John chapter 7, verse 37. I'm going to read it a little faster this time. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. How many of you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you speak with tongues? 
Put your hands down. How many of you have never spoken with other tongues, but yet you believe on Jesus and you know he lives in your heart? Raise your hand. You say, I believe on Jesus, but I've never spoken tongues. Well, I know there was a time in my life that I didn't speak with other tongues, but I was born again. And I knew Jesus would talk to me in my heart. I had no doubt about that at all. But I wasn't living the powerful life in Christ that I should have. And I knew that, that it, was a, it, was, uh, it was a struggle. It's like, why am I doing what I shouldn't be doing? But I know when I do it, I feel guilty for doing it because I have the goodness of God on the inside of me telling me, Gary, you know you ought not be doing that. And the reason I feel, I, I'm feeling something is because the nature of God, the incorruptible nature of God was inside of me and is inside of me. And I'm like, Lord, I want to live for you as I should, but why am I not living for you as I should? Meaning that I know if I die, I go to be with you in heaven, but I'd like to have power to live a holy life right now. So how do I do that? Jesus said, <clears throat> Verse 37, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I hadn't had the experience of being filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Now, I was born again, and the Holy Spirit was on the inside of me. Turn over to Titus, the book of Titus, and let's look at this. Because Peter said, we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that lives and abides forever. And because I have the Spirit of God on the inside of me, I have a responsibility to what? I have a responsibility to let him on the inside come on the outside or ex be expressed on the outside. Titus chapter 3, and we'll look at verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. You know what? I might as well look at verse, um, wow, verse 2, <laughs> verse 1. Let's just go back to Genesis 1. No. Okay, Titus chapter 3. Let's look at verse 1. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Do you have it? Okay. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Now, Titus is writing by the Holy Ghost, or Paul is writing to Titus, one of his sons in the Lord, and he's saying unto him, by the Holy Spirit, he says, Titus, tell those who are Christians among you, Tell them to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. That means I want you to let them know being compliant, being good, being obedient, following after the rule of thumb of law and order, and being a person who's not a problem for authority, it'll be better for them. Because sometimes Christians are in this position. They're like, I'm saved now. I'm born again. Praise God. Nobody runs my life but Jesus. Since Jesus is running my life now, I don't have to obey anybody. Well, you all know that that sounds like a baby talking, doesn't it? That's not a mature person. A mature person knows that you're going to have to obey authorities. If you see the Department of Water and Power telling you, don't go down this street because there's a fall in line, an electrical line, if you don't obey them. Well, I don't have to obey anybody. I don't see, you don't look like you should be telling me what to do and you go down there and get electrocuted. That's your fault. Why? Because you didn't obey authority. The purpose of authority is to bless you and to help you and protect you. And so he says here, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and power to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. That means you're not supposed to be making fun of authority, putting down authority, undermining authority, and trying to sabotage authority and keep what? Distracting authority. Some stuff that people are doing now, they, just, they call it entertainment. It's not entertainment. It's just out and out disrespect for offices, offices of responsibility. 
And because of that behavior, a believer is not going to what? Be able to enjoy the benefits and the best that God has for you. So he tells them, Paul says, by the Holy Spirit, talking to Titus, who's writing, uh, who Paul writing to Titus, but we have the privilege of reading this. Believers, don't be unruly. Consider authority as a blessing to you. Consider authority as what? As a protection for you. And don't always buck against authority because you think you know more. Because with authority comes information. And those who have more information will know more. And they'll be able to help you if you allow yourself to be what? To be informed, take instruction. How many of you know that when you're the boss, how many of you are bosses of your jobs or you're the boss, a supervisor, manager, or owner of your own business? When you have people that want to help you, the first thing they're going to have to learn is to what? They got to listen. They have to be willing to listen. Well, no, I recognize that I have all these skills and I'm going to come into your business and I'm going to tell you what to do. You weren't here when it got started. You weren't here as it began to evolve and to be developed. Therefore, really, you'll be better off if you'll just listen, take what knowledge you do have that I'd love to hear from you, but at least be able to hook up with what's going on. If you come in, blah, 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 saying all that you'd like to do and you don't know enough to even begin to make a a positive contribution, you're wasting time. And I'm not here to try to what? to try to waste time. I'm here to try to make the best out of time. So please listen. Some Christians wonder why don't they get a promotion? You will be promoted if your ways please the Lord. The Bible says if if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. You just have to be willing to comply with instruction. And some people are not doing that. But I'm a Christian. Pray for me that I get a promotion. God's not going to violate his word. If you won't follow authority, you won't follow instruction, you won't see the benefit of being given authority. How can you possibly be in position of authority? See, you really want what? I really want the money. But you see, the money doesn't come without obligation and responsibility. So if you want more money and obligation, you have to be willing to what? You've got to be willing to accept the authority that comes with it. There was one person that said, there are no privileges that you can enjoy that can be separated from their corresponding responsibility. Every privilege has connected with it a responsibility. Now, a thief wants the privileges, but they don't want the what? Responsibility. Because responsibility is where the work comes in. And see, as a believer in Christ Jesus, yes, you received the, the new birth. It was given unto you as a gift, and you received by faith the new birth. But now that you have the nature of God on the inside of you, Take up the responsibility and be willing to grow in him. Be willing to what? Follow God's instruction so that you can mature and have the best that God has for you. We're looking at Titus chapter 3 verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers. A brawler is a person who likes to fight. But what? Gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now this is Paul writing to Titus, and he's letting us know. Paul said, hey, look, I know what it's like to be disobedient. I know what it's like to act carnal and fleshly. I know what it's like to let the body rule and govern your behavior. Paul said, we, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We is a plural statement. Foolish, 
disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Man, that sounds like a whole lot of people, doesn't it? But now, that's the way we were. But we shouldn't be like that now. Why? Because we have a new nature. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that lives in us and abides forever. So therefore, he tells us, but after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, what do you mean washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost? He's saying there that the power of the Holy Ghost operated in you in the new birth. When you became born again, that's described as a a, a well of water. And how many of you know that in the desert, when you talk about a well, that's a wonderful thing to have. Because you can take your bucket, dip it down in the well, and sip from that cool water that's in the well. The well is designed to what? It's designed to quench your thirst. The well is designed to give you life in a hot, arid place. So all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the well of salvation in us. So I don't have to try to get my thirst quenched from somebody else or from some other religion. I have my salvation in Christ Jesus and the well of salvation. It is thirst quenching. Amen. Amen. Now then, the power of the Holy Spirit in the renewing process is talking about the Holy Spirit in us is constantly wooing us, encouraging us. Hey, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to grow more in the word. You need to mature more in the word. So the Holy Spirit is going to be what? Always encouraging you. You sure could use some word. You sure could use some word. You sure could use some word. Jesus is called the word. Therefore, he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and what? Drink. Because he, the word of God always has something to help you where you don't have to thirst. And he said he's given out the Holy Spirit. And when he gives out the Holy Spirit, he says it will be as what? It will be as as rivers of water, not a well of water, but rivers of water pouring up out of your belly. That means you're going to have this geyser effect. You're going to have power coming up out of you. What? You're not going to be thirsty. You're going to have a constant flow of water rushing up out of you, and that constant flow of water as a river is powerful enough to accomplish every task you face and will energize you in your daily activities. I know when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, things that were once difficult for me when I was not filled with the Holy Spirit, those things that I used to struggle with, I stopped struggling with them. I'm like, I got power to deal with that. And I also noticed that the power of the Holy Spirit was just bringing me into the reality of who I am in Christ, what I can do, and what I really possess. And when I found out who I am and what I can do and what I possess, I found out, well, kings ought to be acting a certain way because I'm not a slave. I'm a king. Jesus has made me a king and a Lord. Jesus Christ has made me a priest unto my God. Therefore, I ought to live my life like a king and a priest. I ought to live my life like a child of the Most High God. I ought to live like Jesus. And and when I took time to pray in other tongues, when I took time to speak in other tongues, I noticed something was going on. Turn over and look in your Bible here. You're still there in Titus, aren't you? Turn over to the back of your Bible just before the book of Revelation. Let's look at the book of Jude. Jude. We're talking about Living inside out. Let the living Christ on the inside of you, let him show up on the outside. Jude is only one chapter. It's just before the book of Revelation there. Look at verse 20. 
But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now remember, beloved is, our, is a term that God gives us. It's a term of endearment. So let's all read verse 20 together. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One more time. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So that means when I take time praying in the Holy Ghost, I take time praying in tongues, what happens? I'm building up myself. Well, what do you mean yourself? Because when you talk in tongues, your brain doesn't understand what you're saying. That's correct. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Turn over and look at that. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. You don't know what you're saying when you talk in tongues. In your mind, your mind is kind of like, what are you talking about? It sounds like jibber jabber. Why would you keep on doing that? Because it takes faith to do it. And the more I take time to pray in tongues, the more my faith is increasing and my tongue is yielded to the spirit of God dwelling on the inside of me. And therefore, because my tongue is yielded to my spirit, which is filled with the spirit of God, when I give, get an opportunity to speak, sweet things come out of my mouth, not evil speaking. Instead of cursing, I bless. Instead of having no answer for challenges, I find that answers just start coming out of my mouth. Answers, real answers that can help and be a blessing. My whole lifestyle started changing when my mouth started changing, and I noticed that my mouth started changing when I took time to pray in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. That means I'm talking to God. But notice the benefit of it, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what? Edifieth himself. I'm building up myself. I'm building up myself. So daily I take time to pray in tongues. I'm talking about letting him on the inside show up big on the outside. I take time praying in tongues. I pray in tongues while I'm driving in my car. I pray in tongues when I'm walking. I pray in tongues when I'm walking the dog. I pray in tongues when I'm up early in the morning. Sometimes I just take the covers and pull it over my head, and I'm praying in tongues when my wife is sleeping. Sometimes I'm just, when if I'm sitting at my desk, and I, I started doing this when I found out about it. I found out that the more time I spend speaking with other tongues, it was going to cause him who's on the inside to be seen in a greater way on the outside. And I'm talking to God in a language that God understands, but I don't understand. So what am I going to do? You're still there in 1 Corinthians 14? Look at verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Look at verse 18. I thank my God, Paul said. I thank my God. Everybody say, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. And why would Paul say, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you? Because Paul is like, I have a lot of responsibilities. I've got a lot of privileges. I got a lot of benefits. I have a lot to say, but I want to have the wisdom of God and how to conduct myself with that which I'm given the responsibility to do. And I want to be the best. So Paul said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. He wasn't trying to put them down. He's just letting them know, I know the benefit, and I'm taking full advantage of the benefit. How many of you would like to grow up more in the Lord? Well, then you take time to speak with other tongues. So what are things that we can do to let the greater one on the inside show up on the outside? Well, number one, pay attention that you are born again, that you have the new nature inwardly. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that lives and abides forever. 
You have the eternal word of God, the spirit of God living in you. You're a new creature. Number two, constantly feed your spirit on the word. That means faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Something has been taking place while we were here, while you're sitting down. Something's taking place. I know it doesn't appear that way from the physical senses, but spiritually, if you understood what was going on, uh, spiritually speaking, when you hear the word of God, it goes in your ear and down to your spirit. And that's your spirit man is like, mm, mm, that's good. Mm, that's tasty. Mm, that's wonderful. Mm, mm, that's, you know, and your spirit man is taking it in. And when your spirit man takes it in and you start acting on what you're hearing, then your spirit man grows stronger and stronger and you become mature in the Lord through exercising or acting on the word. And you can be far greater and more mature and bigger and stronger inwardly than you are outwardly. Outwardly, you can be like only so many pounds. But inwardly, you're like, I'm ready. I'm ready. And when the devil tries something, you're like, mm, I'm right on you, devil, in the name of Jesus. And you shut it down. You shut it down. So number one, identify the fact that you are a new creation person. You're a spirit. Number two, feed your spirit on the word of God. Number three, take time to pray in the spirit, which will allow you to grow stronger and stronger. And I have to quit because I run out of time. Let him who's on the inside live on the outside. I love you all. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you for tuning in today's lesson. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to lead you into a confession of faith. If you say these words after me, you can become a child of the living God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us pray these words now, believing these words in our heart and saying them with our mouth. Dear God, I believe in my heart you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He was crucified, his blood was shed to wash me clean. And dear God, you raised him from the dead. So I confess with my mouth, now Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. You are alive. I believe this in my heart. And because I confess you as my Lord, I am now a child of the living God. Father, thank you for making me your very own. I will live for you. you are in Jesus' name, amen. That never I'd like to thank you for your continual support of this broadcast of Spirit Food Christian Center. We're so grateful for your participation. I'd like to give you an opportunity to participate by our Push Pay app. Text my SFCC to the number 77977. You'll receive further instruction on how to give. We're so grateful and thankful for your continual support and love. Remember, you're helping to make it happen. In Jesus' name, you amen. Are the sun.